In Norfolk, they got some deep dikes. <laughs> Those words will be remembered forever as Jethro and I tried unsuccessfully to get through a sketch on the generation game. About eight takes it took. Uh, I know when it's shown on YouTube or on the television, they only showed five of them, but uh, I think there were some bad words said uh, by uh, Jethro and I. And, and I agree with John, his poor suffering manager, that uh, what a pleasure it was to, to have known Jeff. It really was, and he's unique. And, and to hear some of the tributes saying that he was uh, a good businessman and was very canny with money. Mm. <laughs> they say, what's the difference between Jethro and a coconut? Well, I believe you can get a drink out of a coconut. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've known Jeff uh, for 40 years. I met him down in the West Country when he was doing warm-ups for a, a show, I think, and then he had his own little bit in a show about pirates. I think it was called Treasure Hunt or something like that years ago, and I could see that he was just brilliant. I thought, I hope I've never got to follow him. And I introduced him to Des O'Connor all those years ago, and, and, and we became great friends and colleagues since then. And just because I introduced him to Des O'Connor, it was you know, no big deal. It's nothing to do with me how Jethro became one of the great entertainers of this country, because if I hadn't have introduced him, someone else would. He was that good. He was that different. And he became the biggest DVD seller. He became the richest, the most successful DVD artist of all time. Amazing. And he still cleaned his own windows. There's a story that he was on top of a ladder cleaning his windows once and he dropped 50p out of his pocket. And he, he jumped down the ladder to get it and the 50p hit him on the head. <laughs> Jeffro, Jeffro would have made a good chancellor. If you ever spoke politics to him, and this is not the place to talk politics, but I'll, I'll tell you a story of how Jeffro thought of the economy. And uh, he said, you know, last year, Jim, I paid £600,000 in tax. And there's a bloke who lives in Trabogo. He's got three wives, 42 children. They've had to bolt two council houses together. They're all on benefits. And his vote cancels mine. <laughs> he had a point. He also said to one day about John Miles, his great friend and manager, well, he said, I'm getting rid of my manager. Why is that? John's brilliant. Yeah, he's a lovely man, I love him, we'll be friends forever, but it's not as if he's got to phone up anybody and sell me now, is it? Everybody knows where I am, they all know Jethro, so what's the point of him? I said, well, he's your manager. Yeah, but I pay him 20%. I said, well, that's about the norm. Yeah, but you think about this, Jim. Every five years, I do a year for him. <laughs> Oh, oh, seriously, all of us thought about sacking our managers because of that. I remember standing with, uh, with Jeffro in the wings at one of his shows down in Torquay. He was, of course, top of the bill, and his support act was Bernie Flint. Wonderful. And I stood with Jeffro in the wings watching Bernie Flint, who was brilliant, and he was going down really well, and Jeff said, waste the bloody time in it. I said, what do you mean? He said, I said, he's great. Oh, yeah, he is good. He said, but I put him on so I don't have to be here in the first half, and here I am in the first half watching him. <laughs> I could go on and do that first half and keep that 200 quid. <laughs> That's why he didn't have many support acts. But the other thing that John was absolutely right, he hated hotels, he hated staying away. When I had my theatre in Great Yarmouth, he'd drive up, do a gig, and drive back from Great Yarmouth, albeit in the back of Andy's Land Cruiser. Bless him. Here, I said to him once, come on, Jeffro, we're going up north. And we went to a gig in Oldham, and he didn't want to go. It was all up north, and it was all horrible. And he was right, because we both died a terrible death. He went on first and died. And I said, I'll see you when I come off. 
After 40 minutes, I came off as well, having got no laughs, and I called him up and I said, where are you? He said, Bristol. <laughs> he couldn't wait to get home. He couldn't, he couldn't wait to get home. He was, um... do you know what I was thinking? which makes the man even greater. I never was truly convinced that Jethro was that at home on stage. He knew it was his job and there was no one better than him at all, but I've seen the nervousness of him. He got so nervous. And sometimes how he managed to get on that stage and conquer his fear just makes him all the, the greater in my heart. What he didn't like to do on tour with me was do two nights, because it meant he couldn't drive home. And we were in Worthing, which is a lovely place. <coughs> I spent a fortnight there one Tuesday. And um, Jethro stayed over in the hotel, didn't like it, got the ump, didn't speak to me. And he told me that he is so bored when he got up at six o'clock in the morning, then he had breakfast, then he had another breakfast. He said, by 12 o'clock, I'd had my hair cut twice. <laughs> and what happened was, he's walking along just a road in Worthing and there's a man building a porch and like John said with the slabs Jethro stood there with his pipe watching this bloke sawing some wood and Jethro said that's not sawing so good that is it but we do what mate he said I'll sharpen that saw for you Rick. and he sharpened this bloke's saw and then he started sawing some wood within half an hour Jethro had taken over this job was bossing this man round telling him what to do how to alter this and that Four hours he was there, and the wife brought him out, the husband out, a cup of tea as Jethro was leaving. And she said, Who was that bloke? He said, I've no idea at all. <laughs> Later that night, that people in that house who built that porch came to see me in Worthing. And in the first half, out walked Jethro, and the bloke said, That's him. <laughs> it's quite amazing. He was a great comic. He was a great comic. He never really, he never changed from being Jethro, and that's a great thing. Success never altered him at all, really. And he was really, really successful. You must be very, very proud of Jethro. We're all here in church to celebrate life and the hope, the hope that we'll all meet again somewhere hope that we will all meet and it's just hope that we need to meet Jethro again and a lot of people maybe you are not religious maybe you just push hope aside they talk about life after death as something from a science fiction movie but I hope and I look at it this way Jethro my old boy what a caterpillar calls death a wise man calls a butterfly. So you go fly, Jeff. Thank you.